So the question, of course, in web development is client or server? Well, obviously the right answer is both, right? You wanna use the client when you can, when it's the right thing to do, and you wanna use the server when you can, when it's the right thing to do. Next.js has just done a bunch of stuff. React has done a bunch of stuff, kind of moving back towards the server, which is where Astro has been kind of from the beginning. I wanna talk about all the rendering options though available in Astro. And maybe this will clear stuff up for you if you're coming from another framework. And it's just kind of gonna be me free talking. So hopefully you're ready, let's go. Hey, what's up? My name is Chris and welcome to Coding in Public. Okay, so first of all, let's talk about the defaults in Astro. I've got a very basic site here with a form and by default, like every Astro site, this is statically rendered with no client-side JavaScript by default. Now, what I mean by that is even though I can use JavaScript, like here, I'm using it to actually generate this page. And you can see here that if I were to look at the page, it says 47, right? It's just randomly selecting a number between one and 100. This happens dynamically when you build the site, but then it's baked into the HTML. So it only happens once and then it's there on the server. And by default, even though I'm using JavaScript here to build out the page, it's not actually in the browser, right? It doesn't ship to the browser, it's just static HTML. Now there are two ways to include uh, dynamic content like JavaScript actually in your page load if you want to. One is by using a script tag, which we'll show you off in a second. And the other one is by using a client island, which we'll also talk about. That's using like React or Svelte or Vue. So let's maybe visualize this a little bit more before we get going too far. So the default right here, this static one right here, what happens when you go to a static page is you say, hey, I want this website. And the website says to the server, hey server, do you have an HTML page already ready for me? And it says, yeah, I do. And it sends that back to you and now you've got this website. And it sends it back and it's very quick because browsers are quick at reading HTML. So this is what Astro does by default. And by default, it includes no client side JavaScript. You're getting just HTML back, which is super lightning quick. Now there are ways to actually include JavaScript and you'll see over here, I said you can have an island and I, like I mentioned a moment ago, you can optionally say, I want there to be client-side JavaScript on this page, which sometimes you need. So if you come over here, we'll notice that I've got this route right here that it's going to hit a post endpoint, uh, which would not work by default. I'll show you why in a second. Um, but I need some, obviously I need some JavaScript on the page to do this, right? So I need to actually hit a post endpoint, send it some stuff, get data back, update the UI, all that requires JavaScript. By default, I couldn't do this, right? So I have to actually include something else if I want to do the posting, but I can include client-side JavaScript. So let's say something like uh, window dot, uh, let's do, yeah, window dot add event listener. We'll just listen for DOM content loaded and it'll say uh, console log, it's loaded, that works, all right? So over here, there we go, this actually loads. All this happens, but I have to explicitly opt in and say, I want this on the page, right? Now there's the other option, which is to say, hey, not I don't wanna write a script tag, I wanna use something like React. So I've got a little component here, let me pull this in. Uh, I think it's just called heart, something like that. If I can type, there we go, hearts, like that. Now by default, when you use a framework, you have to actually create that package or add the package in. So I've done that over here, uh, React, and you just do that with like bun X or pmpmx or npmx, whatever, astro add React, and it loads all that up for you, it adds it to your config file and everything. But what happens is Astro renders this statically. So the HTML here is static. And if I try to click on this, it's supposed to be interactive. If I come over here to the TSX, you'll see I've got a percentage. And every time I click, it should actually go up 10% until it fills the back of the heart. Now, by default, again, Astro is gonna ship zero client-side JavaScript. That means even if you use something like React inside of here, it's not gonna ship the JavaScript needed. In fact, if I were to come in here and look at the network tab, and let's refresh this here. You'll see I get 68 requests. Now, none of these here are actually uh, React. So they don't include the React needed to run this component. If I want to do that, I have to use a client directive like client load, which loads it immediately. If I refresh the page, you'll see now I have 76 requests. So it's doing that dynamically uh, when I need it. In this case, I've said do it right away. I can also use idle, which waits until everything's done and then it loads in the React. My favorite one though is visible. Uh, what this does is it says, hey, only send me this when I really need it, when it's on the in the viewport. So let's just mock this up. So let's say something like um, min height screen, and then I'll copy this down. So you can't actually see it. And notice I've got 70 requests, but as I scroll down, eventually all the React jumps in and now I've got 76 requests. So it only pulls in the React when I need it, but it statically renders the HTML for me. Now you can use something called client only and then pass it the type of client component you're using, in this case React. What this does is it actually loads both the static like HTML and all the JavaScript needed with the package itself. 
So I'll notice it won't be there when I reload the page and then it pops in once React renders it. So typically you only do that if you really need total control within React. Most of the time you're fine with just saying client visible, which is what I do. So with that, even though I have React on the page, it may never load, which means it's still basically zero client-side JavaScript by default, unless they scroll to that part of the page that needs it like a newsletter form or something like that. Okay, so we've now looked at client-side JavaScript and statically rendered pages. Now I mentioned a moment ago that you need something called a server adapter, an SSR adapter to do post endpoints. And that's because you need the server to do some work, right? Besides just sending back HTML. And I've illustrated that over here with this very rough drawing, which is in a SSR adapter mode, what you're gonna do is go to the server and say, hey, do you have this HTML page? And it says, no, I don't, but I can make it for you. And it makes it live and sends it back. The advantage obviously is you get dynamic data from the server and it sends back just a HTML page. The disadvantage is it sometimes can take a little bit more time. We'll look at a few examples of that here in a second. But once you have the server that can do stuff for you, once you have an adapter that can do stuff for you, it opens up a huge amount of possibilities. So that's what I wanna talk about for the rest of the video is just some of these possibilities. First of all, we have dynamic routes. Now, on any given route at the page level, you can choose should this be dynamic or should this be static? Now there are some caveats there we'll talk about in a second. Um, but if I come over here, you'll notice that this whole page is static. In fact, I can prove that by coming over here, I can do bun run build, which happens to be the engine I'm using. If I jump over here and I look at the HTML, you'll notice this is just static HTML. So even here, notice it did dynamically figure out 14 when it built it, but now it's 14 forever until I rebuild the site. So it's shipping zero client side JavaScript, unless I include an island or unless I include a HTML or a, a script tag, which I did somewhere in here, yeah. So it actually pulls that in, but I have to opt into that, right? And that's what we've done. Now, what I want to do is say, hey, maybe for this particular page, don't statically render it. In fact, I'm gonna use pre-render right here. We're gonna set this thing to false. I say, hey, every time somebody comes to this page, I want you to dynamically render this and then send back the HTML, which means it's actually gonna do all the work on the server. It might take a little bit longer, but it allows me to be more dynamic. So if we were to rebuild this again, fun run build right here, and I just jump back over this way, we will see that the dist folder now includes this Astro client. And inside the Astro client, I do have this index page, but notice it's a function that will essentially do everything I need it to do to then return to me a page. So all this will live on the server. The server will render all this for me automatically when I hit this route, and then it will spit back an HTML page for me. So I haven't included the HTML, I've included the page to create the HTML, which again, makes it super dynamic, but sometimes can require you having to wait a few more hundred milliseconds or something like that for it to do all of its rendering and then kick it back after you. So that's the trade-off you're having to think through. So you can do this for any given route. Now what that means though, is it opens up a whole other list of possibilities. The one I wanna talk about next, if I can scroll over here is dynamic endpoints. That means I can have API endpoints that don't just get so I could come over here and always do a get, even on a static rendered page like this. And let's see if it will render it. Oh, I forgot to restart my server uh, right there. So this will render just this uh, static HTML, right? Or in this case, JSON, right? Uh, hello world. But if I want to do a post endpoint, which is what I've got going on with my form over here, right here, I'm grabbing the form data, sending it along, and then showing a response on the client. What, if I want to send a post endpoint, I need the server to do some kind of work has to receive that data, do some work on it, and then spit it back out. In fact, if I were to look at this, it's going to uppercase it. So that's how I know it'll work. So if I come over here, we're gonna say Chris, I'll hit submit, it does its work, it spits it back out to me. Obviously this is local, so it's pretty fast, um, but you'll see it spits it back out to me and says, hello, Chris. So this can happen because of the server-side uh, adapter, this uh, SSR adapter. I keep calling it the wrong thing. All right, <laughs> so uh, this also opens up another way to do this called actions. Actions are just fancy post uh, endpoints. And you can see what it does is it's like a little wrapper around that. And you get things like accept form data. So it can take like check boxes instead of giving you on or off. It actually renders that to true or false. It does some other fancy stuff as well. But um, the real benefit here is you get to type safe this whole thing. So I can say it should expect only these items. They have to be typed exactly like this. I can even add things with Zod, like the min length is one and make the name required and all this kind of stuff. So this happens right here on the server. So it's just a post endpoint at the end of the day, but then I handle it and I do something. So here I can say like input name, whatever. Now, the way I call this is a little bit different. If I come in here, 
I just say await actions. I import this because I can do inside these script tags, uh, TypeScript, I can import stuff. Uh, all this is done by default in Astro when I want to use client-side JavaScript inside of script tags. You'll notice I call the greeting, I pass it the form data, and then I'll just display the error message or the success message. So now I can say, hi, Chris, and it says, hi, from the action. So all this is happening in this kind of specialized post route that gives me some nice little helpers so I don't have to write all that myself every time. So that's another thing you get with an SSR adapter. Now you also get something called server islands, and these things are really cool. Because let's say you come over here and you have like some kind of avatar that somebody is using, and you want it to be dynamic for each user. So I can pull in this avatar. Is that what I called it? Uh, let's see. Avatar, yeah. Avatar. And for some reason, it does not want to pull in. So let's come up top here. We're going to say import avatar from... Yeah, that works. Okay. So now this avatar should pull in. And after a few seconds, it will render this. Now, this is going to happen when I build the site statically because the page is static by default. But if I jump into the avatar, I'm kind of mimicking that this is maybe going off and doing something. And in this case, this doesn't make a lot of sense for a static site. So let's just refresh it and it's instant. But now it's baked into the page. What if I want this to be dynamic? Well, I could say, hey, go fetch whatever it happens to be. Give me back this. And then eventually I'll have the user's data. But that means when somebody comes to my page, if I make this whole thing like this uh, const, let's see, pre-render right here. If I set this thing to false, now this whole page is like rendered dynamically every time someone visits, they're waiting three seconds for me to get their avatar. Not a great experience, right? So what if I could just statically render the whole page and for little tiny dynamic sections that require the server to do something, not the user, but the server to go off and do something, and I could just stream that data in later. Well, that's what these server actions give you or server islands give you. And the reason I can do this is because again, I have an SSR adapter, which means I've got a little worker on the server. So. Uh, let's come back over here. Now, if I were to add this in here, I can add in a server island by just saying server defer. Now, that means I can use the same Astro component in one place that's static and in another place, maybe I hear I want it to be dynamic. Now, I've got this slot fallback where I can have some kind of fallback and then when the HTML comes back from the server, I can show it right here. And again, we can actually see this if I go to the network tab or we'll refresh here, let me kill all this. And eventually this should come in and it pulls in right here. So the PNG actually pulls in. Actually, I don't want to uh, do that. I want to actually see it because it's right here. Yeah, so here it's going to pull in that image later. But notice this is what I get back from the server. I just get streamed HTML. So it does all its work. And instead of shipping a whole page back to me, it just sends me the little bit that I need and Astro swaps that out for me. So this is, again, available to me because of the, the island. Now we, we can go ahead and just remove that. So the whole page will be static by default. And this little section gets streamed by the server when it's ready. So that's another thing we get because of using an SSR adapter. So we've got a lot of different options. You also get extra things like sessions that you can use, which you can store data on for users. For instance, you can work with cookies in each of your endpoints or even on a, a server-side rendered page. There's a lot of cool stuff you can do here. Uh, these are just the ones I wanted to point out. There also is ISR, kind of, uh, incremental static regeneration. So you can do basically on each page, it will be statically rendered. Um, here it's with uh, Netlify. You can also do it with for cell here as well. And basically what this does is it says, render this page statically and then on a certain sequence or whatever, update this. Um, so every 30 days or probably not that, every like five minutes or whatever, update this. So that way I'm not constantly build, rebuilding the page every time somebody comes, but it is fairly new. So if you come, you're likely to get fresh content. So this is an option with a couple of these adapters as well. And Cloudflare may actually have this as well. I'm not sure. Uh, so you see how we just have a lot of different options now with Astro. We've got client, we've got, um, we've got the statically rendered by default. We've got the server side options. All this is available to us. So I hope that was helpful to kind of just chat through. I know I probably talked too fast and went over too much stuff, but let me know if you want me to jump into any of those more specifically. But it is important to know like what tools you have available to you. Imagine going into your garage or whatever, or going into your kitchen cabinets and you're looking and saying, okay, I need something that does this. You should know what that is if you're writing in Astro. And one of those things you've got is all this extra cool stuff you can do on the server if you know how to use it. And hopefully this was a help in that. Well, thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Happy coding.